Which is going to be the best first round series, Tim? I think it's going to be Cavs Knicks. I'm I'm really excited. I think there's a bunch of first round series that are going to be good. I think Keys Lakers Grizzly series should be a lot of fun. I think Warriors Kings is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited though to see Cavs Knicks. I, I really <laughs> think it's got a chance to be one of the best series in the first round I've seen in a long time. I think it's a true toss up series. We say that a lot. Like you don't really know who's going to win, even though you kind of do. In this one, I genuinely am not sure who's going to win. Um, it might really come down to the state of Julius Randle's ankles. You see him, you know, making moves here. Julius is dealing with sprained ankle for the last couple of weeks. We'll see if he's ready to go for game one tomorrow. Um, but I, I think this one could go either way. Really compelling matchup. Donovan Mitchell back at the Garden. I'm excited to see how it isn't, goes. Isn't, in, yeah, I was, isn't in series like this, though, Key and Adam, you know, right, isn't the history of the league that in these kind of series, team with the best player wins? Wouldn't that be the Cavs because of Donovan Mitchell? As great as Brunson's been. Donovan Mitchell is the best player, but I think the gap isn't that big. <laughs> with the Knicks guys, and the Knicks have so much more depth than the Cavs that this might be one of those scenarios where it does favor the team that's got a little more depth. Because really, Cleveland's a four-player team. After that, there's a ton of question marks. Knicks go eight or nine guys deep, and the trade of Josh Hart, him and Emmanuel quickly have been a, probably the best bench duo in a league by a significant amount this year, and I, I think they've got a chance to swing this series in New York's favor. You know what, Tim? You mentioned Donovan Mitchell, and I was going to ask you, how does the, the hype, behind because I like all that in when it comes to playoff time the, the storyline yep. how does the hype factor into going back to the guard but also the Knicks not really pursuing Donovan Mitchell at the level in which they probably should have in most people's eyes well look I mean that's going to be obviously a huge storyline in the series right Key I mean you look at the way this is playing out you've got Donovan Mitchell coming back to the garden uh you know the, the two games here in New York this year were both pretty awesome games went down to the wire Knicks ended up winning them both Knicks won three out of four in the season series between the teams, and it's going to be a huge storyline. I mean, it, you know, we've seen Stephen A. on TV talking about how terrible it's going to be if Donovan Mitchell beats the Knicks in the playoffs, and certainly if the Cavs come out, and to Max's point, if Donovan Mitchell's the best player in this series and the Knicks win this, or the, the Cavs win this thing in five games, you know, there's going to be a lot of chatter about should the Knicks have gone after him harder last summer? What does it mean for their team going forward? I mean, it's that's certainly going to be one of the big storylines going into this series is just how well he plays and whether he's good enough to get the Cavs over the line. Well, let's see um, if you will converse. How did you put it, Key? You don't argue. You communicate. Communicate. <laughs> let's see how you and Key communicate about this one. Tim Bontemps, can the Lakers make a deep postseason run? I think – I don't think they can make a deep postseason run. I, I think they have a chance to win this series against Memphis, though I think they need a few things to go their way. I just think there's too many things working against this Laker team. You've got the potential injury issues with LeBron and AD. You've got the wear and tear on LeBron in particular. We saw how tired he was at the end of that Minnesota game. He had to expend so much energy just to beat the Wolves in that game on Tuesday night. And I just still don't like the supporting cast and depth around these guys. I mean, D'Angelo Russell was a non-factor in that game on Tuesday. Malik Beasley's very streaky. You know, even Jared Vanderbilt, who's a really nice player, is an offensive liability. You saw Minnesota take advantage of that. So I just don't think this group has enough as constituted to make a deep run. But I do think if things break the right way, they can win this series against Memphis, which, you know, given where the Lakers were a couple months ago, the fact we're even talking about them potentially winning a first-round series, I think, is a pretty significant change. Well, see, that's the reason you and I, we communicate differently. <laughs> we, have, we have our different views on things. And, and one of the things that you brought up is – the durability or whatnot. Yes, that is real. That That is a real issue with Anthony Davis, and that is a real issue with an older LeBron James. Mm -hmm. But as I like to tell Max, what if? Because we live in the what if business. Sure. What if they do stay healthy? You got two of the top players in the NBA and LeBron James, which is still one of the top six players in the NBA. You got Anthony Davis on any given night. He could be the, the top player in the NBA. And then the surrounding cast, yes, D'Angelo Russell did struggle to some degree uh, against Minnesota when you looked at that situation. But Anthony Edwards is a, focused in on the defense because the offensive side were not working for him. He I is a bigger he is a bigger player. So sometimes those sort of things work in your favor and against you if you're D'Angelo Russell. Well, you're not going to see that against Minnesota. Then you say Malik Beasley is streaky at times. What if he isn't? What if he's not streaking? Or he's streaking in the right way. Well, right? I mean, he's if streaking he's streaking in the right way. I mean, sure. I mean, yes, we could do a lot of ifs, ands, or buts, Key. I mean, I but guess that's what you just did well, without saying if, ands, and buts. Well, look, here's the bottom line for me, right? The Lakers, I think if you ask me, can the Lakers win this series? I would say yes, yes they can win yes. this series. Can the Lakers win a second round series against Golden State? I think there's a smaller chance of that 
but in theory, they could, right? But they're going to be the underdog, realistically, in every yeah. series they play. Absolutely. So to That's say, okay. right, so could they win You're each playing the series? odds. Yeah, like, it's the same thing as could the Sixers win a title? Sure, the Sixers could win a title. They're also underdogs against Boston in the second round. They're going to be underdogs if they beat, win that series against um, Milwaukee in the conference finals, right? So could the Sixers win a title? Yes. But well, the chances of that are not very good because they're going to have to win two what series do you think not about to win. The, What do you think about the defensive side of the floor for the Lakers being one of the top defensive teams coming into the first well, round? Of the let playoffs? me give you – so here to me is the – let us be. Let me be a Lakers optimist for a minute. Here's yes, the path you. for the Lakers to win this series. <laughs> they need to control the paint. Anthony Davis needs to be the best player in the series, I think, by a significant amount. They need to attack Jaron Jackson Jr. and get him into foul trouble and get him off the court because we know Steven Adams and Brandon Clark, that could be a huge factor. One really important guy to watch on the Memphis side is Xavier Tillman. I expect he will start, and I think he will guard AD a lot of the time so Jaron doesn't have to guard AD as much and stay out of foul trouble, hopefully from a Memphis standpoint. And the other thing they need to do is get Dylan Brooks on tilt a little bit. We saw in the Golden State series last year Um, Dylan Brooks basically shot Memphis out of the series. And in the three games against the Lakers this year, he was 11 for 45 from the field. He was 6 for 20 from three. In the three games against the Lakers this season, Jaron Jackson had 15 fouls in 96 minutes. If they can foul Jaron Jackson out or get him on the bench in foul trouble and they can go at Dylan Brooks and get him off his game, the Lakers have a path to win in the series. But Mm. I, I I still think if you look overall, Memphis has more talent, more athleticism, more depth, and I think they should win this series. But there is a path for Lakers to do it. The Lakers have had a good defense since the All-Star break. I think the number one rating is a little inflated by both their schedule and opponent three-point shooting. So I think it's a good defense. You want a top five defense. No, they have a good defense for sure. The other issue is I just don't trust their offense. You saw in that game against Minnesota, I, I don't think they have competent shooting. Overall. Competent? I, I really don't. D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, they, they have two. and I'm missing someone else. Even guy for his size, Hachimura, for you know, like but considering it, his position. I just don't think. I don't think when you're talking about playoff level caliber play, I just don't think. At the end of the day, if you're relying on D'Angelo Russell and Malik Beasley to get you where you need to go, I just don't think you're good enough. I, I just, I just right. don't okay. think ultimately right. you are. All right. There yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna reset your name, but because you said that, I'm not gonna reset. Your name. <laughs> ESPN NBA reporter joining us now, Tim Bontemps, ESPN NBA reporter joining us on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. How much pressure, Tim, is on Kevin Durant to win a title with the Suns this year? So Max and I talked about this yesterday. I, I think there's pressure on the Suns to win because they traded everything they've ever had to get Kevin Durant. And also, like, let's be honest, the Phoenix Suns have been an incredibly successful organization for decades. They, they're one, probably, I think they have the highest winning percentage of any team that's never won a championship. They've done everything but win a title in Phoenix. So I I think there's real pressure on the Suns to win because I think the future with the amount of draft picks they sent out and the age Kevin Durant is, um, is pretty high on them right away. I don't feel the same pressure as there on Durant personally, because I think his legacy is already sort of secure, while this would obviously help it. And I think if you look at the fact that they've only played eight games together, there's a pretty easy built-in excuse for this team if they don't win, right? Well, Which is, he was out until April 1st, he comes back. We've basically never seen a team win in this kind of circumstance before. They essentially start the season on April 1st. And I think if you're him, you say, hey, look, if you know we come back next year, we have everybody healthy, we add some death pieces, we're going to be the favorites to win the West. So I, I don't think the pressure is there in the same way on him as there is, frankly, on, say, Nikola Jokic, who, if you look at Denver, they have the best record in the West. They're a dominant home court team. We talk about how wide open the West is. But you're the only one who they thinks they're win. going to win the chip, though. Like, most people I don't, don't think, think they're, most people I, are like, yeah, I ain't going to Well, no, but I don't think they're going to win the chip. But if they don't win it this year, then to me, you look at Nikola Jokic say you're never going to win, right? Yeah, yeah, Which is a true. different thing than right. for Durant, where, like, you know, they okay. just show, you just showed up there. Right. Watch what I do to you right here, though. <laughs> okay, Tim. what do we got? How important is it for Kevin Durant to beat the Golden State Warriors? Well, look, as as I said yesterday when me and Max were talking about this, sign me up for Warriors Suns in the West Finals on ESPN. Give me that. Give me seven games of Kevin Durant against Steph Curry. I mean, look, I, it would certainly be a pretty juicy series if we get – Draymond Green and Chris Paul going at it. We get Kevin Durant and Steph Curry going at it. We get Clay Thompson and Devin Booker going at it. I mean, these teams already don't like each other much. We saw Clay doing the the four fingers thing earlier this year. And I think if that series happens, 
there would be pressure to win that series in particular because of all the history there. So but, if he doesn't win that series, then what? Well, I, I mean, he's still one of the best players of all time. I mean, I don't, I don't think a lot changes, but I, I do think there that would be, to me, a different level of pressure even than winning AD the title. AD is not in the Michael Jordan, LeBron James conversation, and he should be. That's the thing. And if he gets by Steph this year, he might start to be in those conversations. And if he doesn't, he never will. That's how I'm framing this whole story. Tim Bontemps. Which first round series? I'm not going to even ask you this because I already know the answer. <laughs> Lakers, Grizzlies, Warriors, Kings, Clippers, Suns, Knicks, Cavs. Are you most looking forward to? Key is most looking forward to Lakers, Grizzlies. Let's get no, that son, out of the way. Suns, Suns Clippers are, will be a good one for me. Yeah, right. I'm be sure. A good one. I'm sure. If that's on at the same, if for some reason that's on at the same time as the Lakers game, I'm sure you're. I, I would never have it on at the same time as the Lakers game. I wouldn't have my TV watching the Clipper game. Right, of course, that's what I'm you saying. You know, you know, the picture, picture. I would, I just have full screen Lakers. I don't even. Your I, picture I and picture would be the Lakers game and then also the Lakers game in the little picture. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree with you, though. That's the. Uh, but they're all good, though, Key. Like, Warriors-Kings, I like the Warriors. I think that's a drawn-out series. Well, I think it could go either way. Yeah, and, and it's star power on the Warriors' side, and it's up-and-coming <clears throat> star power on the Kings' side. So, you know, you always want to see, obviously, Clay. You want to see what Wiggins looks like. You're always going to get some entertainment out of Draymond Green. And then Steph Curry is Steph Curry. So you, you you got entertainment factor. You got there the feeling that. like De'Aaron Fox is built for this. Yeah, but, but he's built for it. But it's one of those deals where you guys are the bullies on the block in the Warriors, and we're coming in to take down the bullies. You've been beating people up too many, too many years. Now it's the young kid coming into the high school. He's going to show you, and that's De'Aaron Fox and company. Clippers' sons is awesome. Unfortunately, no Paul George, at least at the start. It, it, that's a that's a shame to me. If the Clippers had Paul George, that might be, that could easily be, the quality of a finals matchup, NBA finals, Clippers Suns. But they if they don't have Paul George, I really like the Suns there. So, Knicks Cavs. You heard Tim Bontemps just say he can't. He doesn't even know what to think about that series. I'm trying to think what's the matchup in the in the um, the matchup in the Clippers and the Suns. What's the matchup that we're looking for? Kawhi and and Katie. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Okay, so that's that matchup. And then Westbrook in in uh Booker. Mm. I guess without Paul George, you might say that. Without without yeah. Paul George, right? Yeah. And then what else? Uh, Chris Paul. You I don't say know, Chris that, Paul and Westbrook, really. Yeah, but I, if something feels Something feels different about because Westbrook just seems like his engine is faster than Chris Paul's right now. But they both have a lot like key right now. One of those two, if one of those two guys could win a championship, Chris Paul would be validated out of control because well, people already have that feeling about him. He's like the perfect point guard. And Westbrook would have the three, well, he's all, as I've been see, saying over the past month, would have the but, three triple doubles validated. But Chris Paul is already <laughs> validated because he's the last of the traditional point guards, right? So but he, he's no, already no, kind no, no, of validated. We want him to win because we feel sorry for him. If he doesn't win, no, he will be feel- in the category with Steve Nash and all those guys who were amazing but didn't win a championship. I, he's going right feels, in that category. Maybe because I know him and I love him to yeah. death and he's it's a personal effect for me that that I feel like he's already in a certain category. And if he wins the championship – He's not really – he's lifting the man off his back versus Westbrook, which is haters get away. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. There's, you know, oh, it's, it's there's a different that, yes. feel. It's it is a different, different feel. feel, but I'm just saying in the eyes of history, the, what happens is the details get foggy. And then the people who didn't live through it just, like, look back at the history. Who won a chip? Who didn't? And were they still no, really I, good I, when they I, won it? No, I, I understand that. But when you look at Westbrook and he doesn't win a chip, it's oh he was a hot dog he was never gonna win if he wins one it was like everything all he changes to do all he needed to do was get with the right team that knew how to utilize him yes and he so you know what else changed <laughs> this is some of the funniest stuff ever three, two years ago three years ago right oh he never changed his game he's never gonna change his game he doesn't know how to change his game let him win a championship well he changed his game to fit in what the Clippers wanted to do. 
That's what people go say. Yeah, or else he never <laughs> changed and it paid off. But, yeah, right. I, if wet, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen because they ran into the Suns in the first round without Paul George. This is a bad luck. But it's a snake-bit franchise. Knicks, Cavs, you heard Bon Temp say he doesn't know what's going to happen in that one. Mm-hmm. Knicks are yeah, deeper. Cavs know. have the best player on either team in Donovan Mitchell. And then Lakers, Grizzlies. Like, I, I, you want to know the truth? See, I feel like I feel like the Cavs in the Knicks series doesn't really matter to me as much because they're not going anywhere. They're exactly. Really gonna, they're really going to – like, they're going to run into a gauntlet and it's going to be a wrap. They're That's- going to run into a brick wall in the yeah. East because they have the big yeah. three and then everyone else in the yes. in the Bucks, Celtics, so Sixers. everybody has a shot. In the West. In the West. So 100%. it's kind of like it's more interesting and it is more intrigue in the West than it is in the East. But the difference here is because it's the Knicks and they have a rabid fan base and a huge fan base and the Cavs have Donovan Mitchell, a guy the Knicks were going after, there is, like, in the one matchup that really doesn't matter because neither team has a shot at a chip right now, there's going to be more intrigue than there usually is. And then in the other three matchups, any one of these teams could win the title, right? In the first round, Key, we never get this in the NBA first round. When did we ever get this in the first round? You always know in the NBA, if it's a 1-8, if it's a 2-7, all right, it's a wrap. None of these are wraps. All of these are super competitive. LeBron James is playing at a very high level. Anthony Davis is healthy. They have competent NBA shooting, a rotation that goes seven or eight deep, and the number one defense in the league. And even if you dispute that, certainly a top five defense. Can you rule that team out from winning a championship, Dr. Andre Snellings? You cannot, especially in a Western Conference that's as flat as this one is. You know, like this, this isn't like the East where you've got three teams that are just head and shoulders ahead of everybody else. In the West, it, the line between the Nuggets at one and whoever wins this play-in game is very small. So, I, yes, a team with though, especially something you didn't add is that team just won a championship two and a half years ago around that same core. So, so yes, I mean, they, they've got a shot at it. What, what is it that they need to do, though, Dre, to, to finish the deal outside yeah. of getting through, you know, Golden States and Suns and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's what it comes down to. So this Lakers team, full disclosure, before the season started, I picked the Lakers and the Warriors as my Western Conference Finals. And I have caught wreck for it all year. My Twitter mentions have just been in shambles when the Lakers started off 3-15 and 15 or whatever they were. Um, but I felt like they had a chance to win because they've got that core. They needed two things. They needed to be healthy, and they needed competent shooting around them. They, they've got the shooting now. They currently are healthy. So now they've just got to play. You know, they've got to stay healthy, and they've got to uh, defeat those teams. I think they have a chance to, but we, have, we don't have a big track record with this squad, just like we don't have a big track record with the Suns. So we just kind of have to watch it play out. You mentioned the Suns. Should, should KD and the Suns be favored to win it all, even though you had Golden State and the Lakers, and obviously the Lakers – Change it up the roster a little bit, and Golden State's just now getting Wiggins back uh, off a little bit of a hiatus. So I do not have the Suns as my favorite to win at all. Um, I'm not even sure I have them as my favorite to win the the West, but I've got the Bucks as my favorite to win it all. I feel like whoever comes out between the 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 Bucks and then the Celtics versus the the 76ers, they're the three best teams in my opinion in the NBA based on off the body of what we saw this regular season. The, the Suns, we've got eight games to work with. And, and so I, I, I need more than that before, you know, it, it's kind of like that Brooklyn Nets syndrome. Like we, we've seen, you know, we, we, we saw uh, KD and Kyrie and Harden play a, a few games together here and there and then expect them to come together to win a championship. That was a big ask. So, But, but, but wait, uh, Dr. Dre, Dr. Andre yes, Snellen, stop right there. The yes, only reason the Nets didn't mop the floor with the whole NBA was injury. Let's not forget, the Bucks were being embarrassed by the Nets when Kyrie was healthy. They didn't even have James Harden. If Harden and Kyrie were healthy, the Bucks wouldn't have won a single game. Then Kyrie goes down, Harden comes limping back. They still went seven games, Dre. 
Yeah, I don't think you can project that because of where the Bucks were in their origin story, right? You know, like they, they were still at the we're trying to break through phase and, and they still honestly let's call it what it is. They had their nerves going. Um, but you've seen this Bucks team, they'll get beat by fifty seven points on Monday mm -hmm. and come back and, and come win back. On They're resilient, it's true. And so, and, and so, you know, I don't think just because they got blown out in that first game before Kyrie got hurt, then they I don't lost think again. That you could, yeah. yeah, and then they lost again, but then they came back and won the next two. Dude, without Kyrie, right? They, yeah, I know. No but Kyrie, saying, no Harden. Hey, if it was the fifth, we'd all be drunk. Right, but, we but don't oh, know so, what they would so like. it's about injury. That's it. That's the reason the Nets didn't run the table that year. No one was going to take them seven games. No one was going to take them seven <laughs> games. Let's just I mean, be you honest. Can say that, but I mean, you know, they got uh, hurt, dude. They went <laughs> seven without anybody except. Okay, so let's get hey, to what the my kids say. If, if you ain't got video, it didn't happen. Yeah, all right. Well, that's true. Uh, let's in my mind. Let's go to the Suns, though. They're eight and zero with KD. They are. But Dre, it goes beyond that. KD has won across two different conferences on two different teams with two different support, you know, players around him. He's 25 of his last 27. Andre, he's playing defense like he did before the Achilles. He's, yep. he's shooting first player in history to go 55, 40, 90, right? Like, he's almost been – any group of players he's playing with has almost been unbeatable over 27 games, and now he's with, with Booker and CP3 and Aiden and these guys. You really don't think they're the favorites? Uh, they, they're not my favorites. Not, like you just said, 27 games total across two different franchises, eight games with, with this current Cats. I mean, we, we saw with the Suns last year, right, the clock struck 12 when Chris Paul turned 37, and all of a sudden his game got cut in half. You know, like <laughs> I've never seen lying. anybody age that fast. He's not lying. And, and so, you know, we, we see, I mean, they have, unfortunately, you don't want to say this, but they have a mad injury history. And so, you know, even outside of learning to play together, there are other factors in there. I, I can't make them my favorite to win it all. You know, perhaps to come out of the West, but even that I'm not sure about. Andre Snelling, ESPN, senior writer, joining us this morning on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. So, Dre, how much pressure, though? We're talking about the Suns. We know what KD is all about. How much pressure is on Kevin Durant, though, to not only if he sees the Golden State Warriors, to beat the Warriors based on all the history and joining the team and all, da, 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 and all the haters, but also having what I would call his own team now in the Suns in trying to win a championship. How much this year, how much pressure is on him? The pressure that's on him is because the clock is ticking, right? Like, we just got done talking about Chris Paul. Um, KD himself has had major injuries every year since he, he tore that Achilles. So the fact that you've got this team where two of the best players are well into their mid-30s, you know, Chris Paul's in his late 30s, they need to win as soon as possible. So that's where that pressure comes from. Um, and the fact that, that – you know, he's had his history with the Warriors, and some people respect it, some people don't. He says he doesn't care about legacy anymore, but it, it certainly appears that he does. So th there's definitely going to be pressure that way. And, you know, nobody's talking about it. They're starting off against the Clippers and his old uh, uh, frenemy, Russell Westbrook. So, you know, right from the gate, um, he's going to have to put up if, if, if he really, you know, wants to uh, carry the Suns as far as they can go. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.